You might be surprised to know that interstellar space is not just a vacuum. The interstellar space is full of gases, elements, and dust, which despite being very thin, forms the building blocks of stars and planets. Interstellar space, the space between the stars, is not just empty space. This is a lot of stuff in this space, including hydrogen 70% and helium 28%, which were created and dispersed in the Big Bang event. The remaining 2% consists of heavier gas and dust composed of other elements that form in the heart of stars and are dispersed into interstellar space by supernova explosions. The materials are completely diffused in the interstellar space. The density of this material is higher in some places than in other regions of interstellar space, but usually the density reaches about one atom per cubic centimeter. However, even the densest regions of interstellar space resemble a vacuum compared to air density of Earth's atmosphere. The sun determines the conditions governing our solar system. But outside the solar system, it is the interstellar space and its contents that play the decisive role. Astronomers call this space between stars interstellar medium. The interstellar medium is where stars form. Without such a space, we would never have existed. If there were no dense and thin regions in the interstellar space to become more compact and eventually form stars, the entire universe would be nothing but a cloud of cold, lifeless, dull gas. The denser regions of the interstellar medium are called molecular clouds, which refers to the stellar nursery where stars are born. The first stars didn't have planets, because there were no elements other than hydrogen and helium in the interstellar space to form planets. But uh, with the passage of billions of years since the beginning of the universe, the composition of the interstellar space has undergone a change. The composition of the interstellar space became richer, because the stars themselves gradually made heavier elements inside them. At the end of their life, supermassive stars explode in the form of supernova and scatter their heavy elements in the interstellar space. Therefore, the next generation of stars that are born in this interstellar space rich in heavy elements may have planets for themselves or at least a planet like Earth that supports life revolves around them. Despite the content of interstellar space and the process by which stars and planets are born, it is very likely that there are living organisms on other planets. The Sun is our local star. The diameter of the Sun is about 1.4 million kilometers and it is almost 100 times the diameter of the Earth. To feel the volume of the Sun, you need to feed 965,000 Earth in it. Earth is only one of the smallest planets in the solar system. A stream of charged particles from the outer layers of the Sun's atmosphere is released into space, which is known as the solar wind. The Sun and its solar wind form a giant bubble in space and known as the heliosphere, which encompasses our entire solar system. The heliosphere is like a balloon in which the Sun and our planets are located. The space outside the heliosphere is actually called interstellar space. Neptune, the farthest planet in the solar system, is 30 times farther than the distance from Earth to the Sun. The distance from the Earth to the Sun is called an astronomical unit, or AU. So the distance from Neptune to the Sun is 30 AU. The edge of the heliosphere is four times farther than Neptune, or in other words, at the distance of 120 AU. The heliosphere moves through the space of the Milky Way galaxy. 
When the heliosphere advances in space, the part of it and that is in front of the center of our galaxy receives more radiation pressure than the opposite part. So the heliosphere is stretched like a teardrop in space. Likewise, every star has a heliosphere-like bubble around it. From the edge of the heliosphere, these billions of stars, particles, and electromagnetics radiation leak into space and enrich the interstellar environment. If you pass through the inner edge of the heliosphere, you will encounter a region called the termination shock, where you will accelerate as if you were crossing a rapid. Finally, everything calms down and you enter the solar pause, heliopause region, where the radiation pressure of the sun inside the heliosphere balances with the pressure of the interstellar medium outside the heliosphere. Here you finally enter interstellar space itself. When we talk about space, we often think of a vacuum where there is absolutely nothing for us to breathe. Earth's atmosphere is quite thick at sea level. The atmosphere extends all the way to the top of the International Space Station, but after a few hundred kilometers, it becomes so thin as to have no atmosphere at all. Depending on who you ask, the Earth's atmosphere eventually ends at or above 10,800 kilometers from the Earth's surface. On Earth, there are about 30,000 quantillion molecules in every cubic centimeter of air at sea level, or we could say 3 with 19 zeros in front of it, but for convenience, we write it as 1019x3. So, in a volume only slightly smaller than a normal dice, there are an unimaginable number of molecules. On Mount Everest, there are slightly more than 10-18 molecules in the same volume of air, and at the height of the space station, about 40 kilometers above the Earth's surface, there are only 1 million, 106 molecules per cube centimeter of air, the same number of molecules in the thin atmosphere of the Moon. There is, for comparison, each cubic centimeter of interstellar space contains only about one atom on average, although this varies from 10,000 to 0 0.01 atoms depending on whether you are in a molecular cloud or the interstellar space. Anyway, this number of atoms is the lowest we know to achieve absolute vacuum. Of course, if you don't consider intergalaxy space, which has far fewer atoms. Interstellar space is the space between stars in the galaxy. Interstellar space is not empty, but in general its density is the lowest we know to achieve absolute vacuum. Molecular clouds in the interstellar space are composed of the highest density of matter and are origin of the birth of new stars and planets. Best wishes and see you next time.